Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Alright, Rises Movie Thoughts. I will start with the Talia Al Ghul. I, I don't know if the Al is part of the last time. Anyway, I was surprised by that twist. I will definitely admit that. But I don't know if it. And uh, also, I do actually realize without actually having read anything about you know Ra's Al Ghul other than the Wikipedia entry. I realized that the whole Talia thing, her, you know, the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, Talia al Ghul, coming to take over for him after his death in the comics, maybe also, or maybe it's, anyway, that's right out of the comics, and I really appreciate that. I, I think it ties into the first one brilliantly. It's even the same story that he told in the first one, so I don't know, I guess Nolan had planned all three movies at the time. That's just amazing. You know, anyway, I'm not sure it really changes that much. You know, why, why couldn't it just have been Bane who climbed out of that well? You know, I, I don't really see the necessity for, you know, her being the, you know, sure, I, I can appreciate that that means that, you know, when he trusted her, he made a, a wrong call, you know, and, and actually trusting Catwoman was the right call. So, you know, over the course of the film, Bruce Wayne trusts two women, and one of them, you know, betrays him, the other, you know, in spite of everything, turns around and actually helps him, you know. I can appreciate that as well, but, yeah, I just don't see, but, but yeah, you know, she, she saw the, you know, the, the stuff with including how to flood it, which she of course does, you know, and by the way, it's just so I don't forget, I love the line about the knife, you know, maybe your knife was too slow. Brilliant. Anyway, yeah, I, I just don't see why it needed to be her. And I really didn't believe the romance. The moment that they kissed, I was like, what? Where did this come from? And then they're like, post-coital, and okay, did I look into a different movie? Did, did a scene get cut? What happened here? However, the romance, yeah, I guess, between Bruce Wayne and Catwoman, that worked perfectly. And honestly, I think I might have been willing to fly a nuke into the sea as well after a kiss like that. Man. And uh, I'm going to sound like such a male chauvinist pig saying this, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I appreciate Nolan in putting the camera behind Catwoman when she was straddling the bat pod. I just just want to get that out there. And and the, the suit of hers in general. I really, and, and someone composed that one shot and, and was like, I wonder if any guy is going to look at the explosion that's going on in this shot, you know, because down in the other corner we have Anne Hathaway's lovely yeah. Anyway, moving on from that, yes, I, I really, really like the relationship between the bat and the cat. With, you know, right from the start, there is this sort of teasing, this uh, thing going on with, you know, they, they're, they're tricking each other. And, you know, he finds her at the party and gets the diamonds back, and then she kisses him, and you know, right up, and, and she apparently stole the, the ticket thing, and then he's, you know, oh, your wife said you'd be taking cat. My wife, and then we see her drive away, said, you know, she wasn't going to leave empty handed, she's, uh, you know, she's a good thief, so, yeah, never leave empty handed. And the thing about, you know, you're not going to hit a woman any more than I'm going to fight a cripple, and then she kicks away his cane so she doesn't have to fight a cripple, and you know, leaps out of the, and t tears the stuff off, and then she just looks like she's at a party, and leaving with the, 
And and the thing with the you know congressman, you know, she uses him so that they can, you know, so that the police will be able to protect her. And I love how she acts when she's like, oh, oh and screaming and, and using that, you know, because then they think, you know, it's it's this brilliant turning around of the the, the cliche, you know, you a lot of people sort of expect a woman in a crisis situation to be helpless and because she you know pretends to fall into that stereotype they lose you know a criminal a criminal slips out right out from underneath them that's you know and and the thing about you know oh they wouldn't look for the congressman here are you sure because you just used his phone it's perfect yeah, I do wonder about their excessive. Uh, I mean, okay, so actually they do face Bane's men, but they didn't know that the first time they're talking about. It, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. I, I, you know, will accept if if someone can explain it to me. But I'm just saying, the first time they talk about, it, oh, there's this congressman who's gone missing. Ugh. I I assume next we'll be you know hunting down the people who, you know, re who have overdue library books, you know, and they just hit that place with everything. They, they got SWAT there. What did they think was the... I don't know, is it because of the place's location? Is that what it is? I, I don't know. Maybe they're just so bored with so little organized crime, they're like, yes, there's something else, this action, you know, set in the SWAT unit, you know. Anyway, the... I really like that this one actually shows us so little Batman. I, I think that's a fantastic, it's a really brave decision and I think it really pays off. First movie, we don't see Batman for half the movie. They're building up, he's becoming Batman and you know, finally we have him for the last half of the movie. Dark Knight, he's Batman for the whole movie. This one, he starts out, Batman has retired. He comes back for a little bit Bane breaks him. I can't believe the actually that you know. If anyone, if any director was going to do that, it was no one. You know, it, the moment you see him lift Batman, you just know that that's what's going to happen, and he he snaps his back. And anyway, yeah. So Batman's out of it, and he even gets put in the jail. And yeah, for for most of the movie, there is no Batman. I believe that this has less Batman than Batman Begins in it. And what that does is we get to miss Batman and hope for his return and really, you know, build up. They really build up this, will he be able to return? His back is broken, you know, can he train himself? Can he climb out of that hole? You know, and it's, it's a sort of grander version of the of the well in the first movie. It's even got some bats in it, you know. And, yeah, when, when Batman returns, you know, it's it's amazing for, for the characters and for the audience. We really, yeah, we, we really got to miss him. And it, it's just, it's a really effective return. The, about the pit, I, really like the whole thing with, you know, also that he, he tries three times, you know, the first two times it doesn't work and he falls all the way down and bangs into the wall and, you know, it's just, and also, few directors other than Nolan do that to, to the, the leading character, to the titular hero and to the you know, to to a mainstream audience as well. You know, to to say, yeah, this is this is your hero. This is your hero, no one. You know, this is this is the amount of pain that he's going to have to overcome and endure in order to become the to 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 get past this. You know, and finally, you know. It's impossible to climb, but you said the child did it. Then you're gonna have to do it the same way the child did, without the rope. It's just, it's, it's insane. 
and he he climbs up there and you know he looks down and just and, and the, the the cheer is getting louder and louder and he you know he, he takes a few steps he jumps and seconds of silence and just and he grabs onto it and it's it's fantastic you know it's just completely edge over your seat kind of thing and, and he gets up and Batman's return to Gotham, you know, suddenly, you know, we're actually sitting there thinking, are they going to force us to watch Jim Gordon die like that, you know, on, on the ice, and then suddenly one of the guys falls down, and said, what was it, and, and it's the tiny little batarang. That's the first time in this trilogy he's thrown a batarang, isn't it? And it's even a tiny one. Anyway, you know, he takes out all those guys, and it's just, yeah, fantastic. About the pit, the whole thing with Talia, I will say it was clever how they made us think that it was Bane who was the child. I thought that I noticed discrepancies, but really it was sort of hints that Bane isn't the child. Because, excuse me, Bane says, I never saw the light until I was a man, you know, so evidently no one preached to him as a child. And that doesn't make sense if he climbed out of the hole as a child. So, in reality, he was the protector, you know, not the child. And we just assumed, which is really foul century of us. It's a word, look it up. <laughs> sorry, that was very condescending, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll kick myself later. Actually, that's physically impossible. I'll have someone else do it. Anyway. Yes, the, the, we assume that the child is male, and it doesn't have to be, and, and you know, it's, it's not even a different actor suddenly, it's just, oh yeah, it's a female child, you know, and yeah, it was Talia, and then she returns, and then, you know, he's been all messed up. I also really like how Batman managed to break some of the stuff on the mask there near the end, and, and Bane just loses it, you know, he starts pounding, he pounds a hole in, a, in that pillar, and he just smacks the air, and, uh, you know, man, I'm not sure I'm crazy about the way he gets taken out, though, that felt like a little bit of an anti-climax, you know, not only is it not Batman doing it, but it's a gun instead of, you know, the end of a big fight, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not as bad as, like, a Paul W. S. Anderson, you know, anti-climax, but it's just, yeah. With that said, the line after she gets off the bike is brilliant, you know. You know, I, I'm just not sure I care about it. I, I like your rule about no guns as much as you do, you know. And the and, and the thing with the with the jet there at the end, the bat, you know, flying away from all these missiles. Fantastic scene. One thing, Bruce, two words. Maybe it's one word, maybe it's hyphenated. Countermeasures, okay? You're you're like this is this is military technology. You couldn't think to add countermeasures? Did you not think that maybe at some point there might be, you know, heat-seeking missiles being sh shot at you? you know, I, I realize it might not have made the scene seem quite as cool, but that was, I, I couldn't help but think that in that scene, you know. The fact that John turns out to be Robin, you know, I think Jeremy Johns actually pointed, said this recently in, in a video about, like, you know, Oh, the, he would be perfect to play Robin. <laughs> you were right, you know. It's I, I agree. It's it's definitely he's he's got the qualities. I'm not sure we'll see a Robin movie. I don't really think we should. I I really want it to end here. I think that we should imagine how it, how it goes on from here. It's just that Batman is done. Batman has done his part. Batman has dedicated years of his life to this fight, and he has now eradicated the League of Shadows. He has, he has completely, you know, stopped those who, you know, who, who used the same means as him, you know, sort of, and, and, yeah, it's, it's 
right for him to retire. And I like that he fakes his own death, so it's like, you know, and, and the thing about the software for autopilot, oh, it was installed six months ago by who? Bruce Wayne. And, you know, and only Lucius Fox knows, basically, and Alfred. And I really love that they actually did get, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Finally, you know, finally. Someone, I don't know, put a lamp in Nolan's room or something, because finally, he gave us just a tiny glimmer of light at the end of Neo. Bruce Wayne gets a happy ending. I, that's really fantastic. And you know, it's the thing with Alfred sitting across from him, and they recognize him, but neither of them say anything. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that Selena Kyle sitting with him as well? You know, so they, you know, she gets a fresh start because she got the fresh start thing, you know. Clean slate, to, you know, on the USB key there, and yeah, they, they really work well together. They they fit, uh, you know, together, and I don't think she's going to turn to crime at all because she didn't really want. To. If if she just wanted to do crime, she she didn't need a clean slate for that. She was good at crime. She wasn't getting caught, you know, so. Yeah, the fact that if it hadn't been for Robin, she wouldn't have gotten caught at all. Anyway, yeah, you know, they're going to be enough adventure for each other, and, well, you know, maybe not exactly, but it just, I like the idea that that's, you know, sort of where it ends. And I think also just, you know, this was the right way to do it with the other movies, with Rachel and, you know, yeah, this one leaves that... Well, yeah, this movie itself spoils it, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know, with Rachel dead, there's room for a new romantic interest, and that, that being Catwoman was really perfect. And I also really like that they didn't just kill off Rachel, and that they didn't have Catwoman earlier on. You know, Rachel had two whole movies before, you know, most of two movies, so, you know, we didn't expect her to die, you know, which also made that, that much more effective. Now, the... I like that... I really like that Bane was intelligent enough to figure out that Bruce Wayne was Batman, even though he does leave a lot of... You know, it's, it's maybe not the most difficult thing to figure out, you know, Batman appears very soon after this, you know, billionaire returns from this, you know, long absence, and yeah, you know, he, he certainly wasn't doing a good job keeping Rachel from figuring it out, but I guess he wanted her to know, but anyway, the, but, but yes, also that John figures it out, you know, that, that Robin figures out. Excuse me, because he, excuse me, he recognizes, you know, that, you know, you're hiding this pain, and I recognize that that's, that's what I look like when I hide the pain. And so, yeah, he, that, that worked, I thought, and I really liked, and, and just throughout the whole movie, I could really see how this guy could become, you know, I, I didn't, honestly, I did kind of, figure out early on that he was maybe going to be a hero. Actually, I thought that Batman's back was going to be broken and that would be the end of that, and that John would don the cape and cowl, you know, but I think that they were subtle enough about it and just, it's the good characterization. You could see how this guy, this guy wasn't supposed to be a cop because he's just not, like he said, you know, sometimes law and order is too much of just, a, it becomes a chain instead of, you know, an, an aid. And, yeah, he, he needs to operate outside of the law. He wants to do good, but he can't be a law, what's it called, an officer of the law, you know. And that brings me nicely to the sort of the, what this explores, which is always some of the most interesting in a Nolan movie in general and in these three Batman movies. 
I suppose I should start by saying I kind of got the feeling that this was going to be commenting on the class warfare, which I really don't want to turn these videos political, but recently in, you know, especially in America, it's been really, really extreme. You know, it's been getting worse and worse, this class warfare, and I thought that this movie would do what in time didn't and be smart about commenting on this. In time is basically, you know, it's pretty one-sided and it's just telling my side what my side really would love to to hear, but without, you know, with no nuance to it. And with, in just this sort of really idealist way, because the director is a, a you know, hopeless idealist. And, and anyway, that's, yes, I hope that this would really go and say, you know, well, without these, you know, and you, you have some of that, but then the, the, it quickly deteriorates into this is just, you know, insane, basically. This is not a rule that anyone would really like. There are some uh, little, I don't know, communistic sort of, Hence, there's like, you know, this was somebody's house, yes, but now it's all of our house, you know. What is that? Is it... Anyway, I, I get that, the you know, they're, they're throwing the, the rich people out on the streets, they're sort of reversing the situation, and that sort of, by itself, I don't know, it's, it's extreme, but I can maybe understand, you know, why you maybe want that if you grew up and really poor on the streets with no privilege. But then they have these trials. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing Killian Murphy again. It's just the, the eyes. I love that the, the suit is a little torn and he's, just, he's crazy as ever, you know. And. Uh, but but yeah, you, you have these trials where basically it's, it's death, you know. Death or exile. Ah, death. By exile. Woo. You know, I, I think that some of the films. You know, these sort of, you know, ah, you thought this, but really that? A few of them were a little unnecessary. I thought that would be one of them. But yeah, just, you know, you have these mock trials, you have everyone getting released from prison. Not retrials, but everyone getting released from prison. I just, I don't know, maybe no one wasn't trying to comment on it at all. Maybe I just you know, misunderstood there. I can appreciate that. I certainly don't think that this was Nolan's serious attempt to intellectually comment on that. Now, that... What I do really like is how it comments on sort of the, the truth coming out and sort of these these difficult choices, these unpopular decisions being made because there were several of those in The Dark Knight and here they are revealed and the the negative consequences are are felt. You know, the, the rift between Alfred and Bruce, which I thought was really effective, you know, because they've, you know, they don't always see eye to eye in the first two movies, but they're together and they're they're in it together, sort of. You know, they and and suddenly, and and you understood, you understood his decision. And it, again, I'm talking about this because the movie itself spoils it. You know, and and the thing about Dent. You know the the speech that he writes, and yeah, the the truth comes out and. It's, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up, sort of. It's the fact that they, you know, used these things to, you know... And, and yeah, the, the fact that, the, you know, the, the Dent Act put all these people in prison. One thing, the mayor did die in this movie, didn't he? There, there seemed to be, like, an explosion really close to him, and then we never saw him again or heard about him. Man, they killed... You see, yeah, no one, when he doesn't have to cross a bridge again, he might just burn it. He might just torch it up 
And yeah. Brave man, brave director. But but yeah, you know, we have the 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 dent act because of you know Dent's reputation now getting you know mudded by this. Yeah, they they you know it enrages the people. That's also something I would really have liked to sort of see how do the people feel about this. I didn't really get a sense of and I guess they were basically just hostages. I do really like how it keeps them you know, the, the thing about you have to give them hope because then the despair will be all the greater. You know, it's it's that they can see their their freedom. They think that something good might still happen. That makes it all the more effective and yeah, I, he's, he's absolutely right about that. The... About, you know, with there not being very much Batman in it, I, you know, obviously they made the right decision by still having a lot of action in it. With, you know, sometimes it's the cops doing it, sometimes it's Catwoman, you know, Bane's people, there are various things that just, you know... The, Bane's plan was really clever, and I thought it made, sort of, it was a lot easier to follow than the Joker's if you can call those plans, I guess he himself says, you know, I don't plan. But, yeah, you know, basically, also, it's very, very Roz, you know. It, you don't know about Bane until he wants you to know. The, the people of Gotham, at least, don't. You know, if someone gets down to the sewers, sees the man in the mask, well, they're dead. You know, Jim Gordon only gets away because the, the two people screw up, and both of them end up dead, you know. And the thing about, you know, you follow him, you know, he gets a cell phone, you follow him, you follow him, you know, shoots him into the water with you, and then you're going to end up the same place Jim does, and then I, you know, track the cell phone, and then I know where Jim Gordon is, you know. And it's just that, that uh, John gets a hold of Jim first, I think that's why he survives. But yeah, you know, basically, no one knows about Bane until he blows up a football field. And a few seconds later, this is a neutron bomb. So you made the neutron bomb. Okay, are you the only? And who, can anyone disarm it? Yes, only you. Well, good. And he kills him. And yeah, that just you know, the moment that people are aware of him, they're afraid. They're they're you know, and no one outside of Gotham interferes because of you know the the threat to all of them. And yeah, it that really worked. And the thing with you know, keeping the bomb in three different trucks and the yeah, the whole thing. I didn't really get how suddenly it was in the wrong that they were at the wrong truck because they used the scanner. Did they switch trucks? And I think Jim even says impossible. You know, and I'm just like yeah, how did that happen? But yeah. And the movie just keeps piling these on. You know, suddenly he drops the thing that's going to block the, the the signal from the thing. And also, you know, when she clicks it and just ah, you just bought it, it got from eleven minutes. I'm like, that's what I was gonna say. You know, yeah, it was only this time. But I do get how the you know the fact that someone has a detonator would also make it. You know, even if the time doesn't run out, the bomb could still blow up. You know. If, if someone approaches Bane threateningly, so, yeah. And the... But, but yeah, the, the whole plan was, was really very clever. And I was going to say something else, and now I don't quite remember what it was. I guess maybe the whole Roz thing, the, the Al Ghul family and the League of Shadows, I, I really love also, I'll return to my point almost immediately, I swear, when Batman uses the, you know, the, the fireworks and he's, 
uh, being like, oh, theatricals, uh, those are very effective to the uninitiated, you know, I know about it. And when he also talks about the shadows, and, you know, the shadows are even better for me than for you. Anyway, I guess their mission just got really personal because apparently Gotham is the last place they are going to destroy. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are the last of the League of Shadows. You know, Talia and Bane. And both of them are well within the, what's it called, the area of effect of the explosion. You know, I, the, they're even pressing the detonator right you know, close to the, so, yeah, I don't know if they, I guess they just didn't really care if they made it out after. I suppose that more or less covers everything. Yes, I believe so. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.